Jane Ross has come our way. She is a veteran missionary, uh, really a medical missionary, who spent uh, almost 40 years working in uh, Zambia. And she is a very, very uh, experienced uh, person who's got a lot to share. Thanks for coming our way. It's good to Thank have you. you with us. Thank Lovely you. Lovely uh, African print there. Thank you, from uh, Zambia. From Zambia? <laughs> yes. And, and, and as you know, I've got a real heart for Zambia. That's, yes. that's a critical country for us in terms of the work we're doing overseas. Doreen, you um, went to um, Zambia how long ago? Yes, I went in 1963. And why Zambia? Why did you choose that? Uh, God chose it. <laughs> how, how does that work? How did God choose it? it you know, when I was a, a teenage, God said, uh, uh, somebody said, are you going to be a missionary? And in my mind, I said, no, I'm never going to be a missionary. But God kept on at me. And he said, I want you to go to Africa. I want you to be a nurse. I want you to be a missionary. And I said, no, God, not me. Send my brother, but not me. Hmm. But you know, God was gracious. And I finally did go to train to be a nurse. And I finally went to Moody Bible Institute to study Bible. And then I went to Zambia. And you know, I just count the mercy of God so wonderful in my life. Because God could have said, okay, for 14 years, you've gone your own way, you've done your own thing, but he allowed me to turn around hmm. and come back to that first place where he wanted me. What were your first impressions when you landed in Zambia? <clears throat> um, it was very different from, from Canada, of course. Yeah. Uh, I thought there was nothing with the weather. It was all the same. And I found out after I'd been there, there were different seasons over there. Uh, I found the people very gracious. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved the people. I found they had so much to teach me. I thought I had a lot to teach, right. you know? Yeah. But they, yeah, it works both ways. Uh, it does. Now, did you, did you go to an established medical facility, <coughs> or, or how, how did you get engaged as a, as a nurse? Um, I met Dr. Robert Foster mm -hmm. uh, in Canada here, and he had established the hospital 10 years ago before I got where, there. Where in Zambia? In northwestern province, right. um, about 500 miles from the capital, Lusaka, right. in the bush. So you're right up near on the border with Congo there, or uh, yes, we're not or Angola. Where would it be? Uh, and about both of them. Both of them. We're about 300 miles from both of them. Right. South and. and so we're talking <coughs> real uh, remote here. Yes, it's remote at the end of the line. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and did, you, did you live there and, and uh, start working immediately, or did you go through a time of kind of uh, learning the culture? I did. I went through six months of language learning. Uh, I lived out in a little house in the village, and so I learned culture yeah. as well as language. I guess you would, because you'd go to the market every day. And yes, yes, did you and to the river for water, the river, wash the clothes in the river. Just like any other African yes. has to kind of walk yes. for water. Yes. What about malaria? Did you get introduced, introduced to that too? Uh, quite well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> too well. Too well. <laughs> too well. Yes, I had malaria two or three times, and actually I had malaria with the hepatitis mm. and was flown to England, but... God uh, stepped in. Okay, so you got malaria and hepatitis. You're, you're in a hospital in England, I suppose closer to death than, than life. Do you have moments when you say, why am I doing this? Why am I here? What's up with me? I'm a Canadian. I could be back there. You know, that never happened to me. I think because I fought God's will so long that when I got there, there was no shadow of doubt I was where God wanted me. And, and that was such a, a blessing. When the problems came or I got sick, I never had to say, oh, did I make a mistake? Hmm. It was, I knew. So you're working as a nurse and eventually you became the matron, <coughs> which means yes. you're the, basically you're the yes. head nurse. Yes. Uh, describe to me a typical day in the life of a Zambian hospital. Um, at seven o'clock in the morning, we went to the student nurse's compound and had devotions. Uh, reading Bible, prayer until 7.20, into the hospital by eight o'clock in the morning and uh, made ward rounds, saw the patients, three, uh, 200 beds in this hospital. Um, we, I worked in the operating room as well, so I would go out and help in the operating room. Um, one o'clock was time for lunch, three o'clock back uh, till six o'clock. And then in the evening, um, we had a wonderful time of prayer and uh, singing praises in one of the homes, in our doctor's home. Mm. And uh, every Monday, anybody who wanted to come and praise the Lord, we did there. And then the student nurses had uh, NCF, uh, Nurses Christian Fellowship prayer time mm -hmm. Tuesday and on Friday they had uh, their meeting so I used to say our nurses they they were a major in nursing and a minor in Bible <laughs> and you know we just saw many of them really come to the Lord and uh, 
and are out there now. And the verse of scripture which God gave me was, ye have not chosen me, but I have right. chosen you and ordained you that you would go and bring forth fruit, fruit that would remain. They are there. Well, there you go. I'm here. Nurses in South Africa are called sisters. Do they yes. call them sisters in Zambia too? Yes. I think it's a great, a great name. Yes. A great reference. Um, now, we hear about operations. You say you're in the operating room. Yes. Would you have all the equipment, all the supplies you needed to get these things done as efficiently as you would have done in Canada? We did well. We had the basic, uh, probably a little bit more than the basic for a mission hospital. <clears throat> and we could do almost every operation, all except the head. <laughs> no, no brain surgery. No, right. <laughs> nor heart surgery. Yeah. Right, but but we did have uh, good equipment. Now th this was in the early days, predating the uh, awareness of HIV/AIDS, right? Yes. Yes. Um, what were you seeing before the advent of, of AIDS? Uh, the typical stuff, would you see a lot of little girls, for instance, who had been raped? Would you see little 12 and 13 year old girls having babies? Uh, would you see disproportionate numbers of, of, of young girls? Yes, we would see young girls having babies. Yeah. Um, we didn't really see the young girls who were raped, but we did see them having babies. And uh, were you able to uh, get involved with the communities at all in terms of uh, educating children about sex, about how babies are made, and uh, getting to some of the men who are being predators in terms of these little girls? We had a, a staff that went out and did some education. Um, I myself didn't get involved in it, but we did, we did do it. So HIV comes <coughs> on the scene. At what point were you aware of it? 1983. We had our first AIDS cases. We had three men in a row on our mail ward. We could not figure out what was wrong with them. After three weeks of antibiotics, they were still the same. So we took blood samples, sent it to the international lab. They came back and said, look, you've got AIDS in your hospital. And so at that time, uh, our doctors used to do all the pre-counseling. And then they said, look, this is the tip of the iceberg. We're not going to be able to carry this on. We've got to train. And we asked God to give us a Zambian educated in medicine and give us an, uh, a, a nurse. And uh, those two started in 1990 to train other Zambians um, all around. And they went into the churches, into any public meeting that they could, into the schools. And you know, today, our HIV rate in our province, because of teaching, is between 6 and 8 percent. Well, see, that's phenomenal. That, that's got to be leading the nation, right? Yes, it is, Yeah. because the rest of the nation is very high. Now